Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'm here today with part two of Lightworker Homework 4 Activate Your Central Vertical Power Current Your Kundalini by Alice B. Claggett. Um, part two has a number of interesting points to convey. The title is How We Humans May Communicate with the Star Nations. At the very beginning I have for you an image I found of Mintaka. This is a photo of the Orion Belt for those of you that are familiar. Um, it's very beautiful. And here it is. I'll read you the legend of the photo. Image Mintaka by David D-A-V-I-D-E Day D-E Martin M-A-R-T-I-N 13 October 2005 in Wikimedia Commons public domain so I can show it to you. Here's the description. Photo of Orion Belt with the stars Alnitak, Alnilam, and Mintaka. The color picture was composited from digitized black and white photographic plates recorded through red and blue astronomical filters with a computer synthesized green channel. The plates were taken using the Samuel Ashin, that's O S C H I N, telescope, a wide field survey instrument at Palomar Observatory between 1987 and 1991. The first subsection is entitled The Star Nations each within its own bandwidth of dimensional vibrations. We humans are amongst the members of the star nations, friendly star brothers and sisters from our own solar system, from our own Milky Way galaxy, and from many other galaxies in which sentient ascending life forms exist. The members of the star nations vibrate in many dimensions. All are ascending. Thus some of our star brethren who until recently existed in the fourth dimension might now exist in both the fourth and the fifth dimension and so on. The Hathors of Earth's solar planes, who are, by my reckoning, from the planet Venus of our own solar system, are readily available to speak with us humans. According to Tom Kenyon, who channeled the Hathor archives, the Hathors exist in the fourth through the twelfth dimensions. I have a link for you called the Athos, that's A E T H O S, Sound Meditation, channeled by Tom Kenyon, 20 September 2012. You can go to his website, https colon slash slash Tom Kenyon. Dot com, and there you can search for the Athos Sound Meditation. It's an incredible meditation. Uh, I think it will help you clear your energy field so that you can find
find yourself in touch with these incredible beings, the Hathors of Earth's solar planes. There's another uh, Ascension teacher I would like you to know about. Her name is Judy Satori, and her website is Ascension Library which is located at https slash slash www.ascensionlibrary.org org According to Judy Satori, who so beautifully channels star knowledge, our fourth chakra, the fourth chakra of us human beings, relates to the Pleiadians, our fifth and six chakras to the Syrians, our sixth and seventh chakras to the Arcturians, our eighth to Mintakans in the Orion system, and our ninth to Andromedans. I got that information from a video that she did, which is entitled the Twelve Dimensions of Reality by Judy Satori, and then there's a bar, full video, that's in quotes. I found it at uh, author or publisher Thrive Art and Soul, 31 August 2018, on YouTube. The angelic realm, I feel, has amongst its members those who fashion and harmonize all twelve formed dimensions. My own understanding and experience, though I see no corroboration online, is that we humans may contact the angels, as we may the Hathors, through our chakras four through twelve. In order to speak with our star brothers and sisters, we must place our own awareness in a dimension to which they may tune in and speak with us. Such speech may not be English. In fact, it may not consist of words that we can hear with our physical ears or our astral ears. They may speak to us in words of light. We must be prepared for and attuned to that possibility. Now next I have for you a very interesting sidebar on conveying star messages to other humans. Our star brothers and sisters may speak to us in various ways. They may speak in the languages of sound, whether to our physical ears or to our astral ears. They may speak in the languages of light, or they may be speak in a combination of these. Here's a sub-subheading, Channeling Light Through the Languages of Sound and Light. From that, we may see that when we communicate their star messages to others, we may do so in the languages of sound, or in the languages of light, or in a combination of these. If the language we use is that of sound, then it is easy to record the sound and convey it to others. If we use both sound and light, then to a certain extent, that may be conveyed through video recordings. If we convey sound to a physical gathering, then I feel certain teachings of light will flow forth to those present, in addition to our vocalized teachings. When our body of light is very clear and well activated, then simply through our light we can convey star messages by empathic channeling to others physically present. If others are at a distance and wish to hear, then remote empathic channeling may take place. That same channeling of star messages can occur for any light worker, pathfinder, way shore, or healer whose body of light is clear and well activated through the light worker's interface with our star brethren, 
whether nearby in our own solar system or perhaps in a faraway galaxy. Here's a sub-sub heading entitled Channeling Light Through the Eyes. I have found in a physical gathering that words of light sometimes channel through me through my eyes which appear to others to be flickering. I've written a story about this in my website, Awakening with Planet Earth, whose URL is https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com. The title of the link is Stories by Alice, a Stigmatism or Spontaneous Healing? It's by Alice B. Claggett, filmed on 4 November 2018 and published on 10 December 2018. And you can find it by going to my website and searching for, in quotes, a stigmatism or spontaneous healing? This flickering of light appears to me to be a way of offering gifts of incoming light downloads and of the new DNA, each person's pristine soul DNA, to those standing before me. For me, proffering these ascension gifts of light is an automatic process, a process of my superconscious mind rather than my conscious mind. Thus I suggest for those of the light workers who channel words of light in this way, I find it may be best to physically move away from anyone who feels uncomfortable with this nifty way of gifting star messages through light. Here is a sub subsection entitled Channeling Light Through Spontaneous Mudras. I feel my ascension team began channeling light through me in that way as an alternative to channeling through spontaneous mudras, which involve movements of the arms and channeling of light through the eyes and through physical gestures. In my case, especially hand gestures or mudras. There's more about that on my website, Awakening with Planet Earth, in quotes, at a link entitled, in quotes, Introduction to, to Healing Through Mudras, end quote. That's an article by Alice B. Claggett, published on 25 February 2019 and revised on 16 May 2020. I feel certain you'll find that article on my website if you search by the title, in quotes, Introduction to Healing Through Mudras. Now I have a story to tell you. In the year 2011, as I recall, I had been channeling light through spontaneous mudras in a spirit-filled, multi-ethnic, multi-generational Christian church in Northridge, California. The channeling had to do with the great music the band of the church played, which I found delightfully inspiring, and the awakening of my baptismal self, described on my website, Awakening with Planet Earth, in a link entitled, in quotes, Compendium, colon, Baptismal Self Transforms to Seraph, end quote by Alice B. Claggett, published on 25 February 2019 and revised. So you can go once more to my website and then search by the title, in quotes, Baptismal Self Transforms to Seraph, S-E-R-A-P-H. A seraph is a, is a kind of angel. Now to continue with the story. On the negative side, I remember, I think it was on Sunday, 5 December 2011, being 
escorted out of the church by two burly ushers who backed me up against the exterior church wall so that the pastor of the church could condemn me as being possessed by Satan. For a while, I was upset about my experience with that church, especially in light of the wonderful feeling of loving Christ consciousness I was then feeling. I found out later, though, that another person had a similar experience at that church. I found that out by searching online. And so I began to feel my experience with that church in a less personal way. You can imagine why such an experience would have caused my Ascension team to switch from, from large physical gestures to unobtrusive gestures as a means of channeling the language of light. I have one other link for you on this topic, also at my website, Awakening with Planet Earth. The title of the link is, in quotes, Healing Modalities, colon, Languages of Light and Sound to Activate Codes in the Body of Light. End quote. By Alice B. Claggett, partly excerpted on 22 June 2020 from a video filmed and published on 29 May 2020. You might be able to go to my website and search for a healing modalities, maybe activate codes, those words, and you might come up with that. Uh, with that link. And that's the end of the sidebar. There's one other subsection in this part. Uh, the title of the subsection is, If We Humans Synchronize Our Dimensional Vibrations with Those of Another Star Being, Then We Can Communicate with Them. Uh, this section has a number of just short points. And they include at the beginning of each point a sub subsection heading. But because the sections are so short, I'm going to just read them off to you. And instead of indicating this is a sub subsection and that is a sub subsection, which would I think make it far more awkward to read it, here's the text How then may we humans place our own awareness? in a dimension to which our star brothers and sisters may tune in and speak with us. Certain of our human chakras are doorways, portals are stargates, through which we may speak with our star brethren. Certain of the 18 chakras, which are features of the central vertical power current, the kundalini, of our toroidal body of light, step our awareness up through the first twelve formed dimensions of our universe. The twelve chakras that step our awareness up in this way are the seven personal chakras and the five transpersonal chakras. Our awareness is the tool that opens the doorway to each dimension. By placing our awareness upon one of these 12 chakras, we can shift our dimensional awareness from one dimension to the next. Thus, we may place our consciousness on a chakra from 4 to 12. We may communicate with the Hathors or the angelic realm. If we place our awareness on our sixth or seventh chakra, for instance, we might hope to communicate with Arcturus, and so on. Ascension Gift, a more greatly activated central vertical power current or Kundalini. Our ability to use the central vertical power current, known in ancient times as the kundalini, of our human body of light, as a means of communicating with the star nations, 
is an important ascension gift, an ascension skill available to us as lightworkers, pathfinders, way showers and healers. It is a gift to ascending human beings, to the new humans here on earth. In these days of ascension, when the kundalini is activated, especially when it is activated during a solar cycle maximum, like the one we are approaching in the next few years, but even during solar cycle minimums, given the right situation of heavenly bodies, both near to earth and far away, then the human body of light may be in such an expanded state as to include the transpersonal chakras. During those times, we may communicate with the star nations in those dimensional bandwidths. When those more propitious conditions do not exist and our body of light is more condensed, still we may communicate with beings of light of dimensional bandwidths one through seven or eight. But in order to communicate with the Christed star beings, the friendly beings of love and light and joy, we light workers must have very clear bodies of light. Lack of clarity in the body of light, even a little of it, can sour our communications with dark interference. Truth to tell, it may be we humans who lend negativity to star intel. So I feel. If that is so, then surely it is up to us light workers to clear our energy fields. Then our star intel will be crystal clear and full of love, light, and joy, I feel. Or so it seems to me. Well, dear ones, that's the end of part two of Lightworker Homework 4. May God bless you and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.